Tonight, on the final stretch of the School of Success, our students face their two greatest hurdles, risk-taking and their fear of failure. I'm not sure I would have done this series if I'd known I was going to be up against these guys. Do you have to risk it all to succeed? I'm not going to play this because this is considered high risk to me. And why does failure have more power over us than success? You're on your own for this one, Lisa. No! Yes, there's no help. Challenging their psychology and upskilling their minds, Dr Mark Wilson, Victoria University. Either you really want to come across as the tortured artistic type, or in fact, you really are loopy as a box of frogs. <laughs> Mentoring their business ideas, multimillionaire Tony Falkenstein, CEO Just Water. If your dreams aren't scary enough, they're not big enough. Have I got something that I can make not just big, but super big? Pushing our participants outside their comfort zone, master motivator John Wall, CEO Sugar International. I don't care what you're scared to do in your current business, this is going to solve you. Who will crumble? I feel like a little puddle of sweat lying on the floor. And who will finally achieve their success dreams? It's quite exciting to see that this will be eventually where our future yacht will be packed as well. <laughs> doesn't matter about who else is out there, whether they stay or die or move on, doesn't matter. It's me. If I can stay going, I'm already successful. Risk and success seem to go hand in hand. Big deals just seem to involve risk. But people differ in the extent to which they're more likely to be risk takers or to be cautious. It's just in their nature. Risk takers are more likely to leap without looking and that can be disastrous in business. But if you're really cautious, you may miss opportunities as well. Research shows that people who are more successful manage their risk. They do their homework before they invest or before they change jobs. So what happens if you are a risk taker? Well, let's see. After analysing their personality profiles, I've designed an experiment to test whether high risk takers are more likely to succeed. We're giving each of our participants $30 to gamble within 10 minutes on a slot machine. We'll be watching to see who is the most likely to gamble all their money, who will try and form a strategy, and who is risk averse. First up, Joel. According to his profile, he's impulsive. He did, after all, move his family from LA to New Zealand after watching The Amazing Race. Uh, I'm not going to bet everything all the time. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very mercurial, I'm very impulsive. I admit it, so I'm just gonna see what happens here. Holy crap, I'm $32. Is that? $32, we can eat this week. Oh, <laughs> praise Jesus. What happened? The banjo music stopped! Well, now I gotta bet everything. <laughs> well, there you go. So, oh, look, I'm gonna not bet everything. I'm gonna be reasonably conservative. I had a win. Right, let's bet everything! I mean, he's just so impulsive. Well, my time's up. We're gonna call this the day the banjo music stopped. Because it did stop, and uh, I've got 10 bucks of my original 30. I've got 32 cents in the machine. And it won't even give it to me. So, I leave here saddened, humbled. My dreams of being a riverboat gambler dashed. I don't think I'm cut out for this line of work. Doesn't this just typify his life? I mean, he made a lot of money in the States. A lot of money. He, he let that went down over the years. Then he decided for a reason he'd come to New Zealand. He's just waiting for that big opportunity where he can make a big amount of money. But he'll still blow it again. And I think that's shown right here. It's a great example of Joel and Lisa. Next, Janak and Nalisha, who despite their bravado, poll as risk averse. First of all, I'm gonna look if I can see any rules on how to play the game and how much money I'm prepared to win. It's a game of chance, Janak. It doesn't make any difference. As an entrepreneur, it's my job to know exactly what I'm getting into. Maybe not 100%, but it has to be calculated in the sense that I have a little bit of a background behind it. And that I can see how other people have done it as well. I'm not going to play this because this is considered high risk to me. Well, therein lies 100% of their problems with their business. Now, Tony, you're better qualified than the, than the two of us talk about risks in business. 
but you have to take some. Sometimes business is a bit of a gamble and what they're doing is they're overthinking it, over strategizing, taking no risks at all and that's just not going to work. I think you have to try and extract some enjoyment from your path to success and I do not think Janik and Alicia have ever shown us that they're having fun. No, that's it. Ten percent of all my money. That's all I was prepared to lose. So, how will Debs, our feisty truck broker, place her bets? I wouldn't have done this. Normally I would have just taken the money and spent it on a networking event. That's something that would be a return on my investment. I've just placed my last bet. Um, and what I can say is I've had a go. I've, I've kept a certain amount behind because I, I, I said I'll reserve a certain amount to spend because I think you should always have a go at something. What I like about Deb though is she thought about it mm. I should really be using this money to invest in my business and there's better areas to invest. So you should acknowledge that, but she had a go and uh, I give her full marks. I suspect our most competitive player, Bruce, will be in to win. I'm going to go for higher bets this time. I have been playing 10 lines. I'm going to play 20 lines this time because my 10 line strategy didn't really work. I'm not surprised that Bruce is upping the stakes because he's a high sensation seeker. And in fact, in his business, he's not talking about small bickies. He's talking about big gains. All right. Nothing's working. It's got to be black. No, it's not. He hates to lose, doesn't he? This is his, this, his greatest strength is his enormous competitive nature. That's it. Game over. Unless I dig into my own pocket. <laughs> He's not getting the outcome that he wants, and he has no control over it. Last, our most diligent student, Anna. You have to spend money to make money, so I'm going to go hard and yeah, yeah. Make, a, yeah. <laughs> make a lot. Uh, I think Anna is possibly the smartest person in this group. She's savvy, she thinks about it, she's grounded. I think what she's doing is spot on and uh, she'll, uh, she's bound for success. <laughs> oh, she's the jackpot! <laughs> hey! Oh I won one amount of $12 and then $48 on top of that. So um, I'm very pleased with my winnings. <laughs> I'm going off to uh, think about how I can use this most wisely. Well, sometimes a high risk can pay off. If you put a lot in, then you have like, the prospect of a higher gain. What the results reveal is that high sensation seekers like Joel and Bruce may ultimately come unstuck by playing every last dollar. Whereas strategic players like Debs or Anna walk away when they're ahead in the game. It's all about managing your risk. You must be in to win, but know when to cut your losses. There's a story that you have to go broke once. I don't believe it because I'd like to see people be successful and not have to go through that. At the school, I'm keen to compare risk-taking behaviours with the personality trait emotional stability. Will the high risk takers also be emotionally unstable, or will the results surprise us? I would like Janak and Lisa to step forward, please. Lisa, what am I going to say? You're going to say that I am the most emotionally unstable person here, and possibly of anyone you know. <laughs> Actually, it's funny you should say that, <laughs> because when I worked up your profile, I have to be honest, I thought to myself, either you really want to come across as the tortured artistic type, to the point where, actually, I don't know how you function in the real world, <laughs> or in fact, you really are loopy as a box of frogs. <laughs> now, sure. <laughs> I think that actually is you, really. Yes. Actually, I think that you really are. In fact, I worry about you cutting off your ear. Okay. <laughs> I fall apart where I can, but I won't let myself fall apart when I'm working. And if you ask any of my clients, they would have no idea. So sorry, guys. <laughs> it's true. Now, before I tell you about what sort of person you are, Janet, could someone just poke him and make sure he's alive? <laughs> <laughs> People who score as high as Janet are really calm, they're pretty stable, they're relaxed, they deal really well with situations that involve pressure. When it comes to your basic style, you tend not to worry too much about things going wrong. And when they do go wrong, because you're good under pressure, you don't flip out and go berserk. Yeah, I'm definitely an optimist. I um, tend not to try and worry about things. Um, 
in certain circumstances, we're just, uh, whereas Nalisha would be worrying and I would be just trying to, you know, staying calm yeah. and trying to calm her down. <laughs> <laughs> well, the results are unexpected. Joel may be impulsive on the pokies, but he's emotionally stable, whereas Nalisha Pohl is risk-averse but is highly emotional. Wildcard Brian continues to surprise the group, polling as the second lowest on emotional stability. Yet, as a successful employer, he's learned how to control this part of his personality. Adding more weight to my thesis, success can be learned. I consider myself to be sane, but I'm not emotionally stable. I do fluctuate and it is um, bloody hard work to try and keep it in check. And it's become very apparent over the last six months how hard it is for me to do so, but with practice and with education, I'm getting far better at it. Coming up, John Wall pushes the students to risk everything in their biggest challenge yet. I'm not sure I would have done this series if I'd known I was going to be up against these guys. I mean, have you seen their arms? They're like this. Myself? Yourself, on your Pat Malone. Some of our students have excelled on their road to success, but after three months, John Wall is worried they're not close enough to achieving their big dreams. So, he's designed some experiments to illustrate that fear of failure will ultimately hold you back. What's happened to you is you've been conditioned over many, many years that failure is bad. But if you think about the ways you actually learn things going back to when you were a child, you learn through failure. All failure is, is feedback on what you're currently doing. It is feedback to you to say this is right or this is wrong. And by the way, you never learn anything when you succeed. You only get better when you fall on your backside occasionally. It's good for you. I've got good news for you guys. We're going to put you in some environments that I suggest are pretty intense. They're far worse than a cold call. I want the following people to stand. Anna, Ruth, Brian. Stand up, my friend. I'm your friend. It's progress. Not for much longer. <laughs> and finally, Bruce. I don't care what you're scared to do in your current business, this is going to solve you because what you're going to be doing is far worse to fail at than anything else you've been exposed to before. We're going to give you three training sessions before you go head to head with a professional boxer for two minutes in the ring. <laughs> what? I'm an old man! <laughs> um, I'm excited and nervous. I've never actually been what you'd call an athlete of any kind. So this will be interesting. I really have no idea what it's going to be like, so. Except I will probably die. I've never boxed in my life. I don't even know how to hold up my fist. And the thought of having to actually box against a professional boxer is like, oh my God, what am I gonna, what am I getting myself into? We all hate failure, and we tend to blame it on things that are outside of our control, like bad luck or lack of ability. Most of us are more scared of failure than we are motivated to succeed. The other major fear which holds people back is the fear of rejection. I want these people to stand up. Jill. Lisa. Janet. Nalisha. You four are going to prepare the ultimate sales pitch and presentation on your business and you're going to deliver it live in front of a group of people. Myself? Yourself, on your Pat Malone. Oh, man. Can he help me get it ready since nope. it's our business? You're on your own for this one, Lisa. No. Yes, there's no help. But we're joined at the hip. No, you're not joined at the hip. In your mind, you might be, because you stand your own two feet. That's true. I think John separated us because I rely on Joel, and I'm sure he knows it. I mean, 
he, I think, I mean, not to, you know, toot my own horn, but I think he probably sees me as a capable person that needs to prove something to herself. My new concept has only just come up, so I'm, I'm a little bit nervous because I don't know who I'm presenting to, what, I'm, what it is they want from me. So in those terms, it'll be the first time I ever present my new product. Johnny, you've taken good risks. You're out on your own, you're making it happen. Gold star, my friend, you're out of this. In the time that I've been on the school of success, I feel that it has given me insight into a few different things uh, with regard to leadership, with regard to um, just really getting down and you know, doing the groundwork, doing the, the hard yards if you, want, if you want to start a business. Now, Debs, I think I'm the proudest of you. You've gone your own way. You've listened to some advice, but you've been courageous enough to do what you think's right. Congratulations. You can rest for this one. Well done. Thanks. One of the lessons that I've learned from the show is to look at my business from every angle and to actually start setting a strategy. Initially you said that you know, you're worried or you, or you do get stressed easily. If I can strategize and I can plan that balance before it happens, then I think I'm gonna be okay. When Tony spoke to me, I didn't like the way that he said, go and work for someone else, but it made me more determined to, to make this succeed. I want to work for myself. He, he highlighted two areas of, of weakness for me, which was worry and working on my own. And what I've done is I've, I've feel the fear and do it anyway. Now, Matt. I'm not convinced. OK. You're not convincing me that you're absolutely committed to become a police officer. Right. Now, there's certain things that you should be doing to join the force, am I right? That is correct, yes. Now, what are they? Uh, getting physically fit, licence, and uh, contacting the police and actually getting on with being a training police officer and so forth, and doing that sort of thing. Mm. Yeah, I... Must admit that I am been a bit slack in that, that department, yes. Now I've got to make a decision whether you know I continue investing my time into you and start talking because you know we, what, what, what's the point? So are you going to commit to me to do those things? Oh yes. 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 Are you sure? Positive. Yep. Don't let me down because mm -hmm. you're letting yourself down. That is correct. Okay. Yep. Tough words from John. But Matt must refocus on becoming a police officer or watch his dreams slip by. Okay, now you got to step forward, watch my feet. At ringside boxing, students are hoping John's experiment will help them overcome the fear of failure. The determination, focus, and ability to stand alone are all skills you must master in order to succeed. I'm finding it tough because I'm not a high impact person. I, I love the soft, nice things that in life, like golf. Nothing as tough as this. Am I scared? I think a little bit, yes. So my way of overcoming my fears would be to have more practice so that I know I'm in the best that I can be to deal with the situation. Okay. Again. I'm totally shattered. I feel like a little puddle of sweat lying on the floor. I haven't worked that hard for a long, long time. Satisfying just to last, and then at the end of each, you know, probably 30 seconds, the trainer's giving you a word of encouragement, which does make you feel better, but then 30 seconds later, you feel totally useless again. One, two, one, two, fast. Okay, keep your chin down. I really enjoyed that.